idea um, as, a, as an artist. If you can avoid it, I, I highly suggest it. I want to be, it is what I put my heart and soul into. It is the thing that keeps me up at night. It's the thing that makes me wake up in the morning. I do not want someone else telling me how to do that. Uh, I want my heart to dictate that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a big separation between the corporate music industry and the heart that it takes to make real music that connects with people on a genuine level. And that's why we wanted to be independent. Drugs, alcohol, rehab, relapse. Um, nobody's perfect. Right? We have demons. Uh, as we've seen today with all of our speakers, we're working through imperfections. But if, if you would mind, if you talk about that experience. Yeah, I, um, I never knew migration really in life in general, but definitely when it came to drugs and alcohol. And you know, ever since I was, you know, 15 years old and first and first drank, I, I didn't even know when to stop. And that continued with me. And always my main motiv motivation behind getting sober was to make better art, mm -hmm. to become more of a perfect artist. And that was it. Like, if it wasn't for the fact that I couldn't write worth shit when I was high and drunk, I couldn't make music to the best of my ability, live up to my highest potential. Um, I don't know about, you definitely wouldn't see me here today, I'd probably be getting loaded in a small bedroom apartment if I was still alive. So, um, it was the thing that kept me wanting to get sober. I didn't have the tools. And finally in 2008, um, you know, barely getting by, making music, barely getting by, uh, my dad approached me and was just like, what are you doing with your life? You know, you're you're, you know, 24, 25 years old, and and this has got to be it, man. And you need some help. Went to treatment and um, was given the tools to to stay sober. And I have not followed that program to the best of my ability. To to perfect adherence to that program to stay sober this whole time, but it's what I strive for. And there has been. There's been laps in that, yeah. but it's something that I have to wear as a badge. You know, you, you carry those scars with you. You learn from it each day, and you you, know, you step on a stage, or you, you wake up in the morning, and it's it's what it's who you are. You can't hide from it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna roll a clip here in a minute. Cause coming off, how many shows have you and Ryan and the gang done in this last year? I think, like, I think around, around 300. <laughs> so that's, like, that's five shows a week? Four five shows a week? I think, yeah, five, six. I'm horrible at math, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is that, is it loaded? Is that, can we roll? There's a shot here. We, and we took this from, from Ben's website, Macklemore.com. And this, I think, it opened our eyes to, to grind. So take a look at this. Hit, hit, hit the ball. Hey, let's have a look. A little premature. Let's have a look.
talking about yeah. step back. We're home. No pressure. Key or no, no big deal. No big deal. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. separated Ben and, and McIntyre and Ryan Lewis in, in this last couple of years. And I, what, look what I found in my pocket. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you can't cancel homecoming. So that was Key Arena. That was the first of three sold out shows in your hometown. Yeah. Food poisoning. Couldn't keep water down, nothing down. That was Zach there in that clip. Walk us through that. I mean, you can't, that was a two and a half hour show that you killed, you crushed it. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and uh, you find that inner, it was really like an hour and maybe 35 minutes, but I would take two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> Four hour performance, I mean. Oh, <laughs> six on course. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you have very little choice in that moment. There's 10,000, 12,000 people in an arena that are ready for a show. <clears throat> you, the body just reacts, and it's funny because what happened right before this, um, to, to name drop and sound cooler than I actually am, Russell Wilson and a couple other Seahawks came in right before the show, and they, um, and you know, I just, I was like throwing up, throwing up before this, and Russell was like, you know, I'm kind of like looking for some sympathy. I'm like, man, I got food poisoning. Like, the show's gonna suck. Like, feel sorry for me. <laughs> and and Russell was like, you know, the adrenaline. Once you once you get on stage, the adrenaline's gonna kick in. You'll be fine. And that's what it is. You you push through it. You feel horrible. You step on stage and you forget about it. And if you need to throw up, you try not to get caught on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a violent. <laughs> Seven dry heaps. <laughs> this is a photo from our campaign about being perfect. And the song Same Love. Uh, yes. <laughs> that I felt wasn't being addressed. And particularly within the umbrella of hip hop music. Uh, homophobia, derogatory terminology in reference to gays, still randomly used. And I felt like I had a platform to say something about it. I didn't know what exactly that platform was, being a straight male. <laughs> but I understood that I had, you know, you get to a certain point, you're like, what do I want to say? What do I want to convey to the people? I have an opportunity here. And it takes time and energy and dedication to the craft to like peel through the layers of yourself until you get to that point of a song. Mm -hmm. And I tried writing from the perspective of a gay, bullied <coughs> kid. Thought it was good, brought it to Ryan, he was like, no. <laughs> That's not your story. Tell your story. And my story was growing up in Capitol Hill and having two gay uncles and uh, four gay uncles, if you count their partners. Uh, a gay, gay godfather, his partner, B, 
being a Capitol Hill, a very liberal, a very gay-friendly neighborhood, also being a Catholic, going to the Catholic Church, and being a white rapper. <laughs> Put them together and you got the same look. And and that's and it was me speaking on an issue that I that I feel very passionately about. I feel that all human beings deserve the right to love whoever they want to love, and no one has the ability to tell them otherwise. <laughs> As soon as I heard it and saw the video, the video really brought it home. Like, this is, this is perfect. I appreciate that. Um, do you know, do you know when it's done? Yeah. And it is really challenging to get to that point when you know that it's done. And, you know, I was like, before I was in the car coming over here, got on my phone and was looking up, like, perfect quotes or perfectionism quotes, trying to like gather inspiration and nibble off this and nibble off that to come here and like eventually end up on like that website that I was on and I would have like a perfect quote from this like TED talk. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you were preparing for those media, I guess. <laughs> Ten minutes on the web, yes. Um, <laughs> So staring in front of a blank piece of paper is a challenging thing, and it always has been. It was challenging when I was 16 years old writing for the first time. It was challenging at 30 years old. It's, it's hard, and because I know that I want to live up to my fullest potential. I want to be the best human being that I can possibly be, and I want to make the best art that I can. But sometimes you have to write just to write, and if that turns into something great, Hone it until it's the best it can be, and then eventually put the paintbrush down, put like the final coat of lacquer on the canvas, and just walk away. And that's perfect, and that's the same look. Any final words? You've seen a snippet backstage, and he's been incredibly gracious and working with our team back there. So thank you for making the time. Thank you, uh, but any parting words, knowing perfectionism imperfect, an idea to share, thought to leave Portland and the interweb with? <laughs> I want to say thank you first and foremost for giving me the opportunity to graciously wear one of these very tiny microphones. <laughs> I was like, you want the handheld? He's like, no, no, no. He's like, I want that Star Trek. <laughs> I want that TED Talk microphone. <laughs> Super cute, too. Just been working on stage. Mom calls. Mom, I'm going to the TED Talk. I'm going to TED to Portland. Watch. What's up, Mom? No party words, you guys have been here since like 9 o'clock in the morning. Happy hour time. Yeah, you guys are like, wrap <laughs> But I would say, I'm going to say this in conclusion to that last thought. If you are an artist or a human being and you have a craft or whatever it is that you strive for in your life, do not let the idea of being perfect stop you from just creating or doing whatever, whatever it is that you do. That is why we are here to make stuff. Go out and make stuff and be happy doing it and don't worry about it being perfect. Just create because you love to do it. That's it. Wonderful. Thank you.